Welcome to the worshiping community of Old St. Paul's, Baltimore. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you root those who trust in you by streams of healing water. Release us from the bonds of disease. Free us from the power of evil and turn us from falsehood and illusion, that we may find the blessing of new life in you through the power of Christ. Amen. Songs of A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the evil spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As Aristotle said famously, all people by nature desire to know. On the whole, I think he's right. But I wonder whether we often settle for answers too quickly. With the flood of information that counts as the news these days, it's tempting to tune to sources that most agree with our way of thinking and to take the headlines and sound bites as sufficient. But the truth is rarely so simple. Then there is bumper sticker theology and bumper sticker philosophy, which offer catchy and facile answers to some of life's biggest questions. Sometimes they are plain wrong. Consider the bumper sticker, war is not the answer. But it is the answer if the question is, what does W-A-R spell? Or what is a word that rhymes with door? Sometimes they are paradoxical. Consider the bumper sticker that says, question authority, or its first cousin, question everything. 
the obvious question to either of these is, why? Why should I? Which pretty much defangs the sharp wisdom they were supposed to convey. More theologically, we find bumper stickers such as, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. What did God say? And how do you know God said it? Perhaps you're referring to the Bible. In the Bible, God says, do not wear garments of mixed materials such as linen and wool. Does that settle it for you? Luke 14, 26 has Jesus saying that we must hate our fathers, mothers, spouses, and siblings if we want to be his disciple. In other places, Jesus tells us that we should honor our parents and love everybody. Does that settle matters for you? Or consider the bumper sticker that says, God is my co-pilot. Shouldn't God be the pilot? since God must know much better than we the course we should take and the means of taking it? Then there is the ubiquitous bumper sticker that asks, what would Jesus do? WWJD. It implies that we should answer this question correctly and then do likewise. This may be appealing to Christians, but if we spend any quality time on it, We can find holes in its logic. A tornado is bearing down on me. What should I do? What would Jesus do? He could command it to cease. Okay, but not me. I'm going to run away and hide in my basement. The wedding is going full tilt, but we have run out of wine. What would Jesus do? He could turn water into wine, the finest wine there is. Okay, but I can't do that. I'll just make a run to the wine shop. Miracles aside, there are more mundane limits to the usefulness of the question. What would Jesus do? I need a new bed. Should I buy a Sealy Posturepedic or a Serta? What would Jesus do? The electrician is recommending replacing the circuit breaker. What would Jesus do? Should I rake the leaves before or after I wash the dishes? What would Jesus do? That question doesn't pertain to many of our daily decisions. Still, the spirit of the question calls for a more serious look at it. Perhaps it would make more sense to ask, what would Jesus have me do? Or what would Jesus have us do? Of course, the concise WWJD becomes the more clumsy WWJHMD or WWJHUD. But conciseness aside, this asks an important question that should matter to Christians. Even in my most mundane and domestic interactions and decisions, I believe that Jesus would have me focus on the dignity of the lives involved and to do so with honesty, love, humility, and gratitude for God. In short, Jesus would have us live always as his disciple. So the question deserves more serious consideration when it comes to the weightier questions of life, the philosophical, spiritual, and theological questions. Mightn't that be the point of today's gospel reading? Mark tells us that, quote, Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. End quote. Indeed, we Christians believe that Jesus is the authority when it comes to God and God's relationship with us. What we have comes from God and belongs to God, and our job is to be good stewards of it. God tells us how we should treat each other with love, dignity, and kindness. God tells us that we should rejoice always, and when we find it difficult to manage all of this, especially when life isn't going the way we had hoped, we should put our troubles 
and sorrows in God's hands and trust that all will be well. What would Jesus have me do? What would Jesus have us do? Trust him as the authority in answering the question, how should one live as a follower of Christ? A short answer verbally, but one that merits a lifetime of study and meditation, pursued in the spirit of faith, hope, and love. A study that requires careful reading of scripture and working in community to help each other live the baptismal covenant. Perhaps the verdict on this bit of bumper sticker theology is that it asked a useful question, but we have to look beyond the car ahead of us for the answer. Let us pray to God, who hears our prayers and has compassion. For the hungry and the overfed, may we have enough. For the mourners and the mockers, may we laugh together. For the victims and the oppressors, may we share power wisely. For the peacemakers and the warmongers, may clear truth and stern love lead us to harmony. For the silenced and the outspoken, may we speak our own words in truth. For the unemployed and the overworked, May our impact on others be kindly and creative. For the troubled and the content. May we live together as wounded healers. For the homeless and the comfortable. May our homes be simple, warm, and welcoming. For the vibrant and the dying. May we all trust in your love. For the many blessings in our lives. May we give thanks and become more generous. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
human beings make mistakes. And so the church has a tradition of inviting people to say a general confession on Sundays. This is a time when we're asked to recall those things that we feel badly about and to ask God for forgiveness and for strength that we might change our ways and take a new path. And so now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And the blessing of God be with you this day and remain with you always. Go in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.